This race recap brought to you by Phillips Connect, technology that moves us forward. Tony Stewart last night won on dirt in his SRX series. As we are, we are being told that Sean Langdon's car, read the body English, it does, it's not being yet. shut off. You have an official looking under the car. There appears to be a leak. Leah Pruitt has won the Mile High Nationals for the second time in her career. The second, the front wheels of that car enter the fully staged position. That team is going to go berserk. They had teething problems to start with. The team has molded themselves. They have worked together. They have formed chemistry, and now they're winners. With authority in the final round of 388-4 at 316, is it a smile of relief or satisfaction for Tony Stewart? Uh, this view never gets old, and that's the first time you've said uh, top fuel winner for Tony Stewart Racing, so that will also never get old. <sighs> but I will say that coming up here to the mountain, we threw everything at it, and it was like way too much, and we tried to rotate the earth, and so I'm really thankful, we're all very thankful for Ford qualifying, and I think that has a lot to do with the Vandermeer family, and uh, that's part of the reason we got to be where we're at right now. But that allowed us to kind of have two different pathways of performance. And if we got our act together in Q2 like we did with the 78, then we could go a different route and test, and that went well. And then we said, okay, well, let's go back and put together a program for race day. And that's just a luxury that Mike and Neil have not had this entire season. I don't think they did a lot of damage to him. His, his focus right now is getting off the starting line and trying to prepare himself for the unpredictable. They leave with an 8,000. Robert Hyde is going to drive away, and he wins the final round of the Mile High Nationals. 4.065, 311 miles an hour. It is Robert Hyde handling his business. Both drivers were spectacular on the starting line. A 40 light for Hyde, a 48 for Tasca, but ultimately, he had a seven-cylinder engine. I, I don't know if I'd call it dominance. I'd just say things are going our way, and there's still a lot of real good race cars. But um, really, I want to give all the credit to the Auto Club team. Uh, Last year was probably the worst year we ever had up on the mountain, maybe at any race ever. Never went down the track. Uh, it was just horrible. And Jimmy and Chris have had a year to kind of digest that and think about it and figure out what they want to do when we come back here. And in qualifying, we just went down the track every time, got a little quicker, a little quicker, and just made really good runs. So when you do that, it make, gives you a lot of confidence on Sunday, even though today, totally different conditions than we raced and then we qualified in. Stanfield's early season has been amazing and fluid and smooth and successful. Hartford's has been rough and has been full of frustration, but that frustration has led him to this point. Six, seven, one ninety-six. His wife Amber is celebrating with his friends on the starting line and his crewmen. A great, great drive for Matt Hartford, picking up career victory number five. It's been a long time since Houston at twenty-one. And uh, you know, so when the win light, I didn't know, I didn't know who was winning. I knew when I put the car in fifth gear, I was behind, and that's not a good feeling. But we ran it down, and uh, the wind light came on, so it set some momentum, and and it really made me realize I need to wake up. So went back to the trailer, thanked Eddie. I'm like, you saved me, but uh, that's not going to cut it moving forward. I need, I need to eat a little bit better. And, and, and honestly, I got to second round. I think it was 32 or 35 or something. It wasn't great, but uh, you know, it was good enough to get the win by one by three thou in that round. So the first two rounds, we had five thou margin of victory between the two rounds, which you know, late in Falls Pro Stock, that's still a lot. <laughs> so we'll take it. And then Christian, you know, other than I beat Christian sometime this year, that was, you know, he's kind of been a sword in my side every time I race him, since he's beat me. So rolling up there, he had, he had as fast a car as we had. We didn't have lane choice. And that kid, I mean, I don't know, I think he's one of the best drivers out here right now. He's typically double O. And we went 12 against him and put the car in fifth gear, went across the stripe, and I was saying a lot of things in my helmet that weren't pleasant. And Eddie's like, all right, let's let's turn this around and close the deal. And I'm like, dude, we lost. And he's like, no, he went red. I, I didn't see a win line. So I didn't even know that we won the semis. Maybe somewhat freeing for a guy like Joey Gladstone to understand the only shot he really has here is to absolutely weld Matt Smith to the starting line. 
and he's going to try it. He has three one hundredths of a second advantage. Normally in this category, that is lights out, ends of story, but not this weekend. Another track speed record for Matt Hartford. 7.097, 190.22 miles an hour. Gladstone a game effort at 7.16, but that is a wrecking ball with two wheels attached to it. Well, Brian, this is nothing short of amazing and impressive. And take a look at the whole shot by Joey Gladstone, and he is ahead. He is leading this race up until 7, 800 feet. In, in terms of performance, the, the lap times were pretty close, but it was the 300s advantage on the starting line that had Joey ahead by about a half a bike but from that seven, 800 foot mark to the finish line and too bad we're not running a 900 foot racetrack, but this is a quarter mile, baby. Two finals in a row for Gladstone, not a win yet. Puts him into the winner's circle, second one of the season, 34th of your career, second straight here on the mountain, but this time was on the V-twin, whereas your most recent win this year was on the Suzuki, making you one of the very rare group, we believe it is only Dave Schultz, was one on two different manufactured motorcycles in the same season. Matt, walk us through the decision to run the V-Twin and how you got the job done in such dominating fashion this weekend. I mean, the decision was, you know, we've been running our Suzuki all year long and basically we just don't have all the parts and pieces to have a backup motor. And I've never ran a Suzuki up here, so I just thought that instead of coming up here and taking a chance on hurting that, I had a V-Twin that won this race last year and why not bring that out? Cause it's just sitting in the top of the trailer. We're hauling it around. So uh, I decided to roll it out, do it. And it paid off cause we, uh, number one qualifier, won the race, set both ends of the track record. I mean, you can't ask for much more. I mean, I, I hate to put her back up in the top of the trailer, but you know, that's probably what's going to end up happening. You know, I'm going to save her for, uh, for the countdown. You know, if, if I need it, she'll be there. Handicap head start this time goes to the left side. A little over one second. Wadarzik going to be off and running, and then we'll send Bill Jenkins after him. Red light start for Bill Jenkins by 15 thou. The red light's on, and he gives up the trophy here in the final round. Congratulations to Tyler. Folks down there on the starting line, the scoreboard's already lit up. 11.24, 118 miles an hour. Tyler Wadarzik, national event win number four. And the car on the right side. Five liter, supercharged, new generation Mustang. The car on the left side, 427 LS small block, naturally aspirated. The new generation of muscle cars on display right here at the Dodge Power Brokers Nationals. Handicap goes to the left lane, and then John Brimer is going to try to track him down. Both drivers get away on the green. We got a Ford, we got a Chevy. Camaro trying to hold on. Mustang closing in. Mustang closing in at the finish line. Mustang for the win. John Brimer wins it by one thousandth of a second. Hey, Bandemir, that guy won this race in 1986. He was not driving that car. I just want to be clear about that. Todd McCann and Marty Simpson, we know this trophy is going to stay in Colorado. Will it go to Centennial? Or will it go to Commerce City? I'll let you know about nine and a half seconds after that tree flashes green. Todd McCann on the left side. Marty Simpson in the right side. One run. Somebody goes home with their first national event trophy. Somebody goes home disappointed. Green. There's the throttle stops. Now they turn them loose. Who did the right job? Reading the wind, reading the weather, getting the car dialed in. How about a 952 beats a 953 and the Simpson gang goes wild. They win it by 14 thousandths of a second. Shoneman rolling in here out of Greenlee, Colorado. That's the 66 Nova, the little shoebox Chevrolet. Chris Whitfield out of Highlands Ranch. The 27 T Ford with the big old Chevy tucked under the bodywork. 10.5 seconds is the target here as we go racing in super gas. Super Gas was one of the largest fields contested here this weekend. These two have both put in a lot of work to get here. They blink the bulb at the same moment, and they are off the starting mark. Will it be the Nova? Will it be the 27T? Look for the scoreboard to light up on the other end. A double breakout, 1048, 145, Chris Whitfield. Ray Shonerman goes 1047, 141. Chris Whitfield was double 09, and he wins. He is dialed in at a 741. Daria at a 647. Her whole race is six and a half seconds long, and she is going to give up about a one-second head start. Keep it green 
and let's figure it out at the finish line. Chandler in the right side, Daria in the left side for the trophy at your home racetrack here at the Dodge Power Brokers NHRA Mile High Nationals. No, Daria's car quit. Chandler Tyson. Oh, are you kidding me? He runs dead four for the win, 178 miles an hour. They're going crazy on the starting line. Oh, that is trusting your dial. Even though Daria is broke and parked on the racetrack, this is another case where somebody is going to win their first ever national event. Dave Scott out of Henderson, Colorado. That's the Calais on the left side. He is a former Super Pro champion here at Bandemir Speedway. He is a former Quick 16 champion here at Bandemir Speedway. And he would love to add to his resume, Mile High Nationals winner here at Bandemir Speedway. Standing in his way, that loud, obnoxious split-window Corvette that rolled in here out of Kemble, Nebraska. It's got a 526-inch blown Oldsmobile combination. It used to be very popular back in the alcohol dragster ranks. And he's got her tucked under the bodywork of the Corvette, dialed in at 733. Handicap head start goes to the left lane. And for Wade, even if you can't see him, man, are you going to hear him coming down the racetrack. Both drivers get away on the green. Dave is trying to hold on. Wade is trying to catch him. Wind light. Let's give it to the left lane. The celebration starts on the starting line. Dave goes 773 on a 772 for the win. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest in drag racing content and some awesome old school races. Make sure you check out the Competition Plus Power Hour with the Monday morning racer Lee Craft and Slammin' Sammy Smith every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter channels. It's easy to stay in the know. Download the CompetitionPlus.com mobile app. Sign up for push notifications to get notified of breaking news and the latest feature stories and videos. It's a free download at the iTunes Store and Google Play. Get your CompetitionPlus.com apparel today. Whether it's our nitro-burning funny car design or the vibrant door slammer design, we have the swag to show you are always in the know. Get yourself a hat, too. And we know not everyone enjoys wearing a mask, but if you must wear one, at least wear a good-looking one. Check out the new CompetitionPlusApparel.com for the latest from the place where you have trusted for your news on the Internet for over two decades. 